Hey YouTubers, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am the Taylorette and today I'm going to be talking about how not to jam your machine. There are lots of habits that several sewists or seamstresses practice that jam up your machine. These habits actually help me to not jam up my machine. So stick around if you wanna know what those habits are. Okay, habit number one is do not ever pull the wheel or turn the wheel away from you. Always pull the wheel towards you. Even if that means you have to make one more stitch to get the wheel where you need it to be, but do not ever roll the wheel away from you. That will jam your machine and that is bad for your machine. Don't ever do that. That is one concrete thing that I can say. If you listen to anything that I tell you on this video, do not do that. And point number two is do not leave your threads too short. The problem is, is when those threads, when the sewing machine gets going and it grabs for more thread, it's going to suck it all in there and the bobbin, it's going to be caught in the bobbin and this is going to be caught. Even if your top thread and your bobbin thread are even and your top thread comes undone and your bobbin's still going and it's long enough, that could cause issues. So make sure just all around, if you don't quite understand how that all works, believe me, pull out all of your threads like this and yeah, make sure they are behind the foot. And that brings me to my third point is this has to be behind the foot. Do not start sewing with your thread in the front or kind of like see how the thread is on top of your foot there. Make sure it's under the foot. Make sure you grab that, pull it underneath and the tail is going behind the foot. Here is another tip. I'm taking my bobbin out. One of the problems that people do is they thread their bobbin case backwards. This is not backwards. What is backwards is when you thread, you're looking at your bobbin like this. You're looking at your bobbin case. I'm gonna take this out. You wanna make sure that you're looking at your bobbin thread and it looks like the letter P. This is the stem and this is the letter P, the circle here. That's your letter P. You don't want it to be a backwards P and then you put it in. If it's not like a letter P, then that will cause lots of jamming and your machine will not work correctly. And that works the same with machines that don't have bobbin cases. If you're putting your thread in there, always make sure that your thread is going round and then it hooks back around. That is really key to having smooth stitches on the back. And while we are on the subject of the bobbin, I will say do not wind your bobbin while the top thread is threaded. Say I were to wind it over here and I were to turn it on high speed, do not wind the bobbin with the top thread threaded like that. That will contribute to getting thread caught in the bottom. Oh yeah, and lo and behold, I actually have a clump of thread that came out of the bobbin of my bobbin after I just demonstrated that for you. So really do not do not do that. That's just bad for your machine. Machines have a feature where it turns off the stitching here and it threads the bobbin and you don't have to worry about that with the top thread. But some machines don't have that feature. And so if your sewing machine is stitching like that while you're winding the bobbin, unthread all the way up to here, get it out of this hook there and make sure that it's not jamming through the needle or up here in the hook. And I would hope that this next one would be a little obvious. However, I don't think that a lot of people are aware of this. Do not sew when under any circumstances, if there is no fabric under here, do not sew your project or do not hit the pedal when there's no fabric under your foot. That will contribute to throwing your machine out of time or doing something that you don't want to do to your machine because it will have to be serviced if you keep practicing that habit. Also, another tip that would apply to especially home sewing machines, um, do not start with your fabric here away from the needle. Start with your needle over the fabric, slightly over like one eighth of an inch. I mean, I'm talking really close to that edge because if you start here or even off like this, that's technically sewing without fabric underneath your foot. That kind of coincides with my previous point. Make sure it's slightly on the fabric. You don't have to go all the way forward. Some people think they have to go all the way up here. You start at the beginning like logically you would do, but make sure that when your needle starts going up and down, it is actually going on the fabric. If that is causing issues, then you can use a little piece of fabric, like a scrap piece of fabric here, and put this down like that. 
And then you can start sewing like this and you can go into the next stitch or the next seam really nice and smoothly without it jamming because that could also cause jamming as well as you are sewing. Don't stop and realize you went off track and then all of a sudden feel like whoops and then pull the needle up and then go, oh, we're gonna go over here. That's just a bad practice. It wouldn't necessarily jam your machine, although it could depending on how you do it. If you do it just right, it could jam your machine. That won't jam it. It just, it's also bad technique too. I mean, look at that stitch, that's huge. Here's another tip when you're done sewing. I have never seen anyone make this recommendation, but I have found this to be true every single time. This is just as important as the wheel, my first point about not turning the wheel the wrong way. So when you're sewing and you bring it slightly up and oh, there's your needle, mm -hmm. then you lift up the foot and you're like, oh, it's kind of snagging. I can't pull it out. Oh and you just kind of keep pulling and it snaps and it will snap and then it'll leave fabric down there. That, when it's tugging, the machine is telling you, pull the needle up higher. So that means I pull it until you hear a little click. It just went up and now it's barely going down. That means it's ready. And now it'll come out nice and smooth and all the threads will come out. Whereas before, it would most definitely get thread stuck down there. And a lot of people don't realize that thread is down there. When they don't pull the needle up and over slightly, it will get thread in there and then they start sewing and then it starts jamming up. And that's what's jamming up your machine is when you're sewing, let me demonstrate, going all the way to the end. Now we're here, our needle's down. When you pull it, you go up and there it hits the peak goes just over, now it's just starting to go down. Now it's ready to pull it out and it's nice and smooth. Otherwise, you're gonna have this, like I mentioned, you're gonna be stuck, you know, just barely pull it and then it's gonna be like weird. You'll notice all those threads are down in there. See that? All those threads, oops. If you notice all of those threads stuck down there, that is a recipe for jamming right there. And that could throw your machine at a time if you just start sewing without having those out. One more point I have to make before I end this video is do not under any circumstance, this is more important than the wheel I would say and all the other ones that I emphasized, is do not under any circumstance ever push the foot pedal on your sewing machine, even if there's fabric under the foot. Okay, I'm, I'm kidding, all right? I'm kidding, I'm seriously kidding. That is all my points for today. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you've ever heard any of these tips or if you even have experience that these things do work, I would love to hear from you. Also, if you have questions, other questions about why your machine is jamming up, please let me know. I have done a lot of troubleshooting on these machines on what jams and I sew for hours on end and I don't have any jamming because I practice these these practices and they all work together. When you're doing them all at once, that is really going against you. When you're doing one or two of them, it could happen every now and then, you're not sure why. But if you practice these, you shouldn't have too much jamming. If you are practicing all of these techniques or all of these habits and your machine is still doing it, you might wanna question if there's something wrong with your machine and if it needs to go in for servicing. But all of these things, if you are going against these habits or if you're doing all of these things that I talked about, these things will make your machine need to be serviced more often. Trust me, I've had lots of experience with this. So that is all I have to say for today. If you enjoyed this video, like this video, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all next time. I am Taylorette, a historical costumer, and I wasn't gonna say that. Okay, I don't know how experienced you are. Okay, all right. They practice these, ugh. And... <laughs> okay. I'll be going over those with you today. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, but you might be a beginner.